episode four of the Fat Loss Nutrition Series. Today we are gonna talk about the less sexy, but very important still topic of micronutrients, water intake, and fiber. So as we look at this pyramid, like I've said multiple times in these videos, shout out to Eric Helms of 3DMJ, the creator of the Muscle and Strength Pyramids. He puts micronutrients on the third pillar. A lot of people will toggle micros and macros around, they'll kind of put micros before macros. It really just depends on your adherence, really. It depends on your preference, it depends on the individual individualization of your protocol. Sometimes putting micros first is a better solution. Because if we're trying to create a caloric balance, but you are eating so poorly that you are still in fast food restaurants, you don't understand what protein, fats, and carbs are, so on and so forth, we have no business tracking calories or macros. Therefore, for adherence purposes, we're gonna skip up to micros and double down on your ability to eat whole foods. Yes, it's micronutrient focused, but in doing so, we are going to balance out macros and calories without you even realizing it. So in many scenarios, if you are not up to par yet, if you have not tracked macros before, if you are just trying to get into the habit of working out and eating right, number one, I suggest getting a coach. And if this stuff confuses you, like I've mentioned in other episodes, you can always apply for coaching. We are taking on clients and we'd love to help you out. You can get a free call in the description, click the link and apply. But if that is you, if I just described who you are, or if you have a client who is in that scenario, you might wanna start with micros. This is gonna give us the vitamins and minerals, the health that we need, but it's also probably gonna level out macros and calories as well. Macros and calories and dialing those in, even though they were episode two and three, it is a more advanced prescription. It is a more advanced method in order to get a more advanced result at the end of the day. But today's topic is gonna to be micronutrients, H2O, and fiber. I put these three together because they're very easy to track. This, this episode is probably gonna be a little bit shorter, a little bit more to the point because at the end of the day, you don't need to track them as specifically as you do macros. There's a reason for that. Micros are smaller, first of all. There's no calories containing in them, second of all. Therefore, tracking them exactly isn't gonna influence body composition much at all. It's only going to influence things like skin, hair, nails, a little bit of your central nervous system. Not as much as macros or calories, but it's still gonna affect that. Your cravings, which happens from a byproduct of being nutrient deficient. If your body knows you are missing a lot of nutrients, you will start craving foods. A lot of times you end up directing those cravings towards junk food or not such great choices, but it's really your body screaming out for different nutrients. So if you're supplying your body with the right nutrients through fruit and vegetables and whole foods and things like that, you probably will have less cravings because of this. A good example. How many times have you ran through a whole bag of chips or ran through a whole row of cookies? Everybody watching this is raising their hand because we've all done it. But how many times have you ate four peaches in a row? Pretty weird if you have, not that many people have. But the reason being is because a peach gives you calories, it gives you macros, and it gives you the micros you need. It gives you the fiber you need. Shit, it even has H2O, it has a lot of water in there. You were getting what you need from the calories there. Far less calories than the cookies but you are satisfied and you walk away. Cookies give you the calories, but they do not give you the micros, the fiber, and the H2O. Therefore, you're probably gonna keep snacking on them because your body is searching for more nutrients. This is where making good choices with micros comes into play. And in fact, this can actually greatly influence your adherence to these two. And I've seen it time and time again. I've even had clients hitting their macros on the dot every day for weeks but being a little too flexible, eating packaged foods, not eating very many greens. And I'll simply suggest, hey, inside of your calories and your macros, let's change the composition of where you're getting those. Let's focus on more greens, let's focus on more whole foods. I want you to get a little bit more of these foods and I'll list out some good foods that are very micronutrient dense. They have less cravings, they sleep better, and all of a sudden they start losing weight. Was it because their macros changed? No is because they were getting better health. They were getting more vitamins and minerals. They probably got more fiber. They were getting more H2O. They were simply getting more micronutrients. And to add to that, one of the reasons I love focusing on micronutrient dense foods so much is because they're more accurate from a macro perspective. And what I mean by that, in the last video, we talked about how food labels can round and estimate. Apples and peaches can't. They are very specific, they are very accurate. And when we eat whole foods like rice, potatoes, vegetables, fruit, whole meats, things like that, the amount of protein, fat, and carb inside of that food when we measure it is far more accurate 
then going to Chipotle, then going to the store and getting a packaged cracker box. Things like that are far less accurate and it's harder for us to track and consciously know that we are actually hitting our macros. So if we want to be more specific, more dialed in and more precise with our calories and macros, it might be advantageous to have more micronutrient dense foods. So what are micronutrients? Simple, vitamins and minerals. That's all they are. Vitamin A, B, K, potassium, calcium, magnesium, so on and so forth. All these vitamins and minerals, which again, do not have calories, but they are essential nutrients for our body to survive, are vitamins and minerals, they are macro, or micros. Mainly what they are gonna help is skin, hair, nails, nervous system, cravings, bodily functions, eyesight, hearing, things like that. Having a, a huge deficiency in micronutrients is gonna cause some issues with these. You might have brittle hair, cracking skin, cracking nails, things like that. You might not heal as fast when you get a cut, so on and so forth. Therefore, we need micronutrients. Part of this function standpoint is gonna be our immune system. This is very, very important for anybody watching or listening who is heavily into weight training. When we train, we stress our body. This is a good thing. We stress our muscles, we stress our joints, we stress our immune system, we stress our central nervous system. When we stress these things, our body has to adapt to that stress. When it adapts to that stress, it gets better, stronger. That's the whole point. Stress, break down, adapt, recover, get better for the next time to do it. And now we slowly do that until we keep scaling up. The reason I say this is because when we train, our immune system breaks down. Therefore, we are going to be in more need of micronutrient dense foods to keep supplying our immune system with what it needs to recover faster. Let's go a step further. When we train, we deplete nutrients through a couple things. Number one, we deplete nutrients through sweat. Number two, we're gonna deplete nutrients because we're utilizing our nutrients more through performance and fuel. And last but not least, when we have a diet that is very high in nutrients, but we're also consuming a lot of water, which most people training do, we're flushing out a lot of nutrients. When we train really hard and we lose body fat, we're losing fat, which means our fat soluble vitamins cannot stick to our body as much, which is why a lot of times bodybuilders are deficient in certain vitamins, specifically ones that are very fat or water soluble. Fat soluble vitamin, a good way to describe this is Fat is a boat, the vitamin that's fat soluble is a passenger on the boat and it's trying to get to land, our immune system, let's say. It cannot get there without the boat because it has to cross the sea. This, the boat is the fat. So if we consume vitamin D, which is a fat soluble vitamin and we consume it with just water and no food, it's probably not gonna get absorbed very well. It needs that transporter, which is fat. If we have that vitamin D with whole eggs and coconut oil, because we're cooking eggs in the morning, that vitamin D is gonna get absorbed and transmitted into our body a lot more effectively. Because of that, it's important to understand all this because you might need to double up on your vitamin D or your vitamin B or your iron or these things that are technically and uh, most commonly deficient in lean and athletic individuals from sweat, from losing body fat, so on and so forth. So, I just wanna preface that a little bit as we go into the micronutrient talk. Um, some things for you guys to remember. Iron, calcium, magnesium, zinc, vitamin D, and this isn't technically a vitamin or a mineral, but it is also a highly common deficiency, omega-3 fatty acids, so like fish oil, things like that. Those nutrients are very deficient in individuals, so when we talk about micronutrients, it might be important for you to aim for foods that have those vitamins and minerals in it, or aim for supplementation to make sure that you're not getting into a defi deficient standpoint as you lose fat, as you drink more water, as you sweat through training. Going down the list, fiber, super important for digestive health. It's a pretty common thing most people know. You don't need too much. It's kind of a double-edged sword. When we have too much fiber, we get backed up. When we have not enough fiber, we get backed up. If we don't consume enough water, it, fiber doesn't have anything to bind to and it doesn't do its job. So we need a combination of enough fiber in that sweet spot, uh, or I'm sorry, enough water in that sweet spot of enough fiber. Usually that's gonna be 10 to 15 grams per 1,000 calories. That's a generic thing and it can go higher, but what I tend to see inside of my coaching is that if you're between that 20 to 40 mark of fiber, you're probably gonna be good. You're gonna have great digestion, you're not gonna have any issues, and you're not going too high. Going over 40 starts to push the limit, especially for women. 
40, 30 to 40 is a good sweet spot for men, 20 to 30 is a good sweet spot for women. As you diet and you pull calories out of your diet, it's naturally gonna get lower because you're consuming less food, and that's okay. Just make sure that the minimum effective fiber intake is gonna be 10 to 15 grams per 1,000 calories. And the whole purpose, again, is digestive health. Last, we're gonna talk about hydration. Hydration and electrolytes. This is kind of a combination of the vitamins and minerals we started with, and then your just general water intake. You need water to perform in the gym. You need water to live. Our body is the vast majority water. The highest percentage of what our body is actually made up of and the earth is water. It's H2O. It's very, very important for our survival. It's very, very important for our body to absorb nutrients. It's very, very important for digestion. Water is so unbelievably important and so many people neglect this because it's hard to remember to drink water throughout the day. So an easy trick is to set a reminder in your phone that goes off every or every other hour to just drink some water. Drink down 12 to 16 ounces, you're gonna be fine. You don't necessarily need to track any of this. You don't need to track how many vitamins and minerals you're getting. You don't need to track how much hydration you're getting. And you don't need to track how much electrolytes you're getting. Just make sure you go through the checklist that I'm gonna cover in here in a bit. And if you do that habitually and intuitively, you're gonna have all your bases covered. For electrolytes, we need them for nervous system function. We need them for muscular contractions. We need them to get some of our vitamins and minerals, specifically minerals because a lot of the minerals are electrolytes. We need these things to function properly. We need these things to perform harder. A good way to prove this to yourself, if you train very hard in a high intensity interval session in any athletic endeavor, or if you're a CrossFitter, take some water and take one fourth of a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. Throw that back, chug it down 30 minutes prior to training, and I promise you, you're gonna train harder and better than you have in a long time. It's a quick, easy fix, and it works wonders. But a good way to ensure your sodium and your electrolyte balance is high enough to perform hard, build muscle, and continue seeing proper health, is to just add a fourth of a teaspoon to every meal of pink Himalayan salt. Pink Himalayan salt has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. It's gonna stimulate your thyroid, your metabolism, it's gonna improve insulin sensitivity, and it's gonna help your performance and your ability to stay hydrated. Super important, very underrated, and none of this stuff has calories. Fiber does because it's a carbohydrate, but in general, these vitamins and minerals and this water we're talking about can make a massive improvement to your ability to adhere to your calories and macros, your overall health, and your performance. And if you can lock in those things, indirectly, your fat loss, your, your muscle gain, whatever your goal is, this is gonna go through the roof. So to close this out, I have the micronutrient checklist. Four things that if you check off the boxes, and they all kind of encompass to one thing I'll finish with, if you just check these boxes off, you're gonna be set. The first one, eat three to four servings of greens per day. I don't care what kind of green it is, just have some greens. It can be a greens drink, which I wouldn't repeat more than once, but that can be one serving. It could be a serving of spinach, kale, broccoli, Brussels, asparagus, green beans, whatever you want. Get your dark cruciferous greens in your diet. Three to four servings is gonna be three to four cups, three to four handfuls. Don't dial into the nitty gritty, just do it. Three to four servings. One to two servings of fruit per day. Even if your goal is fat loss, and yes, that is sugar. It's a myth that you shouldn't be eating fruit. Fruit is full of fiber, it's full of antioxidants, it's full of tons of vitamins and minerals. You absolutely need fruit. And if anything, you need it even more when you're in a calorie deficit because your immune system is compromised the lower calorie you go and the harder you train. Therefore, training individuals who are trying to lose fat, it's even more important for you to consume fruit. Super, super important for your hormones, your health, your digestion, and everything we've been talking about in this whole conversation. One thing to add on fruit. When you sleep, you deplete 50% of your liver glycogen. Liver glycogen is literally the fuel in order for your liver to function. If your liver is not functioning properly, not only are you not detoxifying your body every day, but your nervous system will also be harmed, which is gonna relate to a whole gang of different declines in performance, health, so on and so forth. Fruit is liver glycogen. Potatoes, rice, starch, that's muscle glycogen. So when we consume rice or potatoes, our muscles grab onto that nutrient and use it for fuel. When we consume fruit, it turns into fructose, which gets stored as liver glycogen, not muscle glycogen. Very rarely will it get stored as muscle glycogen. Therefore, if you're skipping out on fruit, your, your liver is not tapped out. And while we sleep, we deplete up to 50% of that and we need it to survive. We need it to thrive. Therefore, 
Super important to get one to two servings of fruit per day. You can have it in your breakfast to immediately replenish that liver glycogen, or you can just make sure that you have one to two servings per day. And again, handful, cup, same thing. Food variety. Make sure you're not eating the same thing every single day. One study actually showed that flexible dieters had more, or sorry, less nutrient deficiencies and a better overall health because they got more variety of food. When they knew they could eat whatever they wanted, as long as it fit in their macros, they were more likely to switch up their greens, switch up their fruits, switch up their proteins, switch up their fats. They had a wide variety of foods and therefore their nutrient diversity was higher, which made their vitamin and mineral consumption better. So sometimes it's good to get a big variety. Now there is a time and a place to be more strict, more rigid and have a very kind of bland and just structured meal plan because it's gonna allow adherence to be better. But at some point you should practice more food variety. Last but not least, consume one half to three fourths of your body weight in fluid ounces of water. Very simple, for most people, consume a gallon of water and you're gonna be fine. It's not too much, it's not too little. Um, a good test, if you don't wanna count the fluid ounces you're drinking, your pee should not be completely clear. If it's completely clear, crystal clear, you're drinking too much liquid, you're probably pushing out water-soluble vitamins, and that's not good because then you can become nutrient deficient. But if there's a tint of yellow and it's not dark yellow, you're fine. Unless you eat something like asparagus, that's obviously a different scenario. But you should have a tint of yellow to your urine, it should not be crystal clear. That's the easiest way to track if you don't wanna track um, fluid ounces. To encompass all of this together, the simplest thing I can let you leave with, if you're tracking your calories, you're tracking your macros, do this one thing and everything will work out and you'll kind of check all your bases on this. Keep 80 to 90% of your diet whole food. That means 10 to 20% can be flexible, it can be whatever you want. If 80 to 90% of your diet came from something that was grown on earth, walked on earth, flew on earth, or swam in the earth, you're golden. You're basically stuck to plants and animals. If you can do that, you're gonna get all the nutrients you need. It's gonna be easier to hit your macros because things are more accurate and you're gonna see better results. So in a nutshell, that's micronutrients, H2O, and fiber.